Welcome back guys, Dr. Ricky here for another video today. Hey, today I'm gonna react on a show called Explain that's on Netflix and they basically just dive into non-mainstream topics and they happen to have done one on plastic surgery so I can't wait to see what they're gonna explain and I'm gonna try to explain to you what they're talking about. Let's jump in. There is definitely a look that is very on trend and you see it anytime you open Snapchat or Instagram. The Coca-Cola body. Shaped like a guitar. Bit lips. The fox eyes. The slim little nose. I guess like the Kylie Jenner and like that kind of group. The Instagram look is not real. When is it okay for us to talk about health and body type? Not even body type, but just health and weight without being called body shamers. And I think one of the hard parts about social media is that you're only getting the highlight reel. People are lying about things that they're doing. It's okay, it's okay to wanna make change. It doesn't mean you don't love yourself. And so this is gonna be a really interesting video to see because I do think that social media has become a big problem. But I think it's the lack of transparency that is part of the biggest problem. Using apps like Facetune, where you can yeah, make minute tweaks crazy. to your photo, resizing, smoothing, shifting the very structure of your face. More and more people with the access to pursue them are starting to adopt that face for themselves in real life. The number of cosmetic procedures has nearly doubled in the last decade. They've gotten safer, cheaper, and more sophisticated. And the patients receiving them have gotten younger and more diverse. I get asked all the time, like, how young would you do a cosmetic procedure on someone? I've done breast reductions in girls who are 14 years old because they have what we call gigantomastia, where they're so big, they either get bullied at school, they can't wear clothing, they can't exercise and participate in PE classes and things like that. So I think, am I gonna do a facelift in a 14 year old? Well, I don't know, maybe if she's had a bad traumatic injury to her face and she needs something to even her up, but if it's just someone who comes in and says they don't like their face, am I gonna do that in a 14 year old? No, I'm not gonna do that, so let's keep going. The Swan, a 2004 reality show that I remember that America show. into a frenzy. Team of surgeons plus a cosmetic dentist, therapist, trainer, and a life coach crafted self-described ugly ducklings into swans and then pitted them against each other in a final beauty pageant. Right, like this is the problem with society. You're creating this turmoil that people have with their body image and the way they look at themselves just for entertainment. Like you're putting this in front of people. And so that's the problem. Cindy was a contestant on season one. I'll start from the top. So I had an eyebrow lift. I had cheek implants. I had some fat removed under my eyes, buccal fat removal, chin reduction, a mini facelift, breast augmentation, tummy tuck, light liposuction on my inner thighs. It's a lot. If you have saggy skin on your tummy or saggy breasts from having kids or just genetically you have that, you can work out and be healthy all you want and you can't change that. And so the confidence that you give back to someone when you're able to do these kinds of procedures, that affects everything in your life and the air of confidence that you can give someone, that's what I love about my job. No matter how much exercise or crunches, sit-ups I would do, I was not losing my, my baby belly. See? But they were a young family and couldn't spare the money for cosmetic surgery. When the swan had a casting call, at that point, I knew that I needed to at least try. And she has no regrets. I'm very happy with the results. That freaked me out. I had teeny tiny waist. I've never really had a waist before. Love my nose. Love my nose. I was really happy that day. So it's gonna be interesting to see if they talk about if she's still happy today. She said she was very happy that day and she looks amazing. I understand like the financial strain for getting some of these procedures is tough. These cosmetic things just aren't covered by insurance. You just have to budget your money and, and you can do it and that's okay. And it's I think it's a little bit sweeter when you make a plan and save your money. And I think you should just budget. It's These are elective procedures and you do them when it's right for you. After that season came out, half a million women applied to be on the next. Wow. More people than live in the entire country of Iceland were willing to go on television to get plastic surgery. Crazy. In the early 2000s, our idea of extreme was changing, but this whole spectrum had actually been shifting gradually for almost a hundred years. World War I was like nothing humanity had ever seen before. Modern weaponry, tanks, machine guns, poison gas, killed millions, many of them with faces disfigured by shrapnel and bullets. So this is the stuff that most people don't 
really think about with what we do for a living. We fix cleft lips and cleft palates. We put Humpty Dumpty together when they fall off the wall and they break their face or they get in a car accident or they get a cut or they have a huge cancer operation to remove a big tumor. We fix that stuff. So, you know, a lot of people really shame us for what we do for a living, but you forget about all of the other reconstructive work that we do that's really rewarding and big. Yeah, see, look at these, these Surgeons disfigurements. Surgeons had never it's seen crazy. injuries like these before. So to fix them, they had to get creative. Crafting noses out of cartilage borrowed from ribs, reforming shattered jaws with bits of leg bone, filling in hollowed cheeks with patients' own fat and tissue. Surgeons spent years working on the same patients, striving to make them look like themselves again. It's amazing to me the pioneers that figure this stuff out. Like when people had that defect like the guy had on his nose, we figured out how to take rib to rebuild the internal structure of the nose. But they used to basically elevate flaps of skin on the arm and they would suture it to their nose like this and they would have to live like this for weeks on end so they could come back and divide it and leave the skin behind because it then builds up its own blood supply. So some of this reconstructive stuff is incredible and it's been going on for a really, really long time. And we've been perfecting it. They hired actual artists to craft prosthetic masks. Yeah. Their work wasn't just about function, it was about form. One of those World War I surgeons is now sometimes known as the father of aesthetic surgery. Joseph was Jewish, and so were many of his patients who wanted him to erase the markers of their ethnicity, allowing them to be inconspicuous in a society that was hostile towards them. He helped put plastic surgery on the spectrum as something you could do for aesthetics alone. So that little segment there, they showed um, a bunch of rhinoplasties and uh, I had one when I was 24. And when I looked in the mirror, all I saw was my nose and that really bothered me. And uh, I've lived and experienced it. So I know what my patients are going through when they come in and want change. In the mid twenties, half of America was going to the movies every week and lots of budding stars were having their faces shuffled and reassembled for the screen. Fanny Bryce famously got a new nose and heartthrob Rudolph Valentino had his ears. Oh, nice work. In 1924, a newspaper even launched what may have been the first plastic surgery contest, a search for the homeliest girl in New York so they could turn her misfortune into a fortune. Looks like the swan was going on way back then even. A woman named Jacqueline Nagel won, and it worked. She scored a movie contract and moved to California. And in the decades since, plastic surgery has only gotten cheaper, safer, and more accessible. Is a push-up bra extreme? How about braces? Or laser hair removal? Cutting off a mole? Freezing off your fat? Fillers? Botox? It wasn't very long ago when Botox was viewed as this crazy thing that mad celebrities were doing, injecting poison into their faces. Oh, it's changed. Okay, hold on. <laughs> Can I move my forehead? I have Botox in my forehead. I saw things that I didn't like. And by the way, last year, COVID was tough, man. I think people are coming in after COVID because they've been staring at themselves on Zoom and, then, and facial stuff has actually gone up tremendously. It's pretty incredible. Everyone's spectrum is different. It depends on who you are and the culture you come from. Like South Korea, where one in three women in their 20s have gotten work done. One in three women in their 20s? That's crazy. Wow. And there's a special name for surgeries undertaken just to improve your job prospects or in Brazil. And in part, that's thanks to this man, Ivo Patangi, a world-renowned surgeon to the rich and famous. He really, really is one of the guys who's one of the fathers of plastic surgery who really developed a lot of the techniques for the things that we do today. Patangi was a pioneer. He developed techniques for tummy tucks that hid yep. scarring below the bikini line, the clamp. championed less invasive mini facelifts, and developed the Brazilian butt lift. What? The Kardashians didn't know him, did they? Brazil's contestant in the 1954 Miss Universe pageant, Martha Roca, had more curves than the average woman on that stage. The contest narrows down to the finalists. She lost. And it's Miss USA. Because the judges said her hips were too big. For all of eternity, people are always judging other people, and it's not right, but it's been going on forever. Every 
remember when white women were scared to have fat asses. Like, I remember that being part of history. Of I love her. Mix a lot. Infamous song. Skit at the beginning, it Sorry. captures that perfectly. Becky, look at her butt. We hope to mainstream that was Kim Kardashian, you know, the rest of her sisters one by one kind of slowly following suit. And the BBL became the fastest it. growing procedure by far. Brazil's passion for big butts has gone global. I'm going to break here real quick. So the BBL, the Brazilian butt lift, I will tell you that it's been taken to an extreme in America by putting like a thousand cc's or more into each butt area. The Brazilians kind of laugh at that. Those guys really traditionally only put three or 400 mls or cc's of fat into each butt cheek or gluteal area. And we've really taken it to an extreme here in America. A sociologist claimed the curvy beauty ideal could be traced back to enslaved African women who bore the children of their white slave owners, resulting in eugenic aesthetic experiments that avoided Africanoid exaggerations, a black woman's butt on a body that otherwise looked white. The obsession with big butts is definitely appropriative. Now black women who do not have that body type are somehow seen as like, less black or less attractive as black women. I just felt like there's a lane for me to get it done. Why not fix something that I don't like? And then there's the Instagram face, which is basically a mashup of features borrowed from different ethnicities. Those slanted fox eyes and big pillowy lips have been mocked in racist caricatures for centuries. And people now pay for them. Oh, contour and threads. Yuck. With a few syringes of filler. This is nothing new. It's just that social media is enhancing it. And then people are just denying or lying about things they've done, which makes someone else think, oh, they have that naturally. Like, I wish I could have that. So now I'm going to go do something. And that's, that's where, for me, the biggest problem is. Growing up, I was kind of obsessed with the Victoria's Secret Angel. Like, wow, like, look at these women. I just wanted to look like that. If Victoria's Secret never existed, if I had never seen those runway shows, would I still have been boob obsessed? Would I still have wanted a breast augmentation? Yes, you would have. You still would walk past other people in the world and have desires and wishes based on what you've seen in society. It's just magnified now. And let me just tell you something. Seeing those women walk down that, that runway, it doesn't mean that they're healthy. This is the discussion that I think we need to be having today is, yes, you can be healthy in all different kinds of body types. Our beauty ideal is now shaped by plastic surgery which means it's harder to achieve without it. Things that were once extreme have become routine. And at some point, things that are routine can start to feel required. But it's like anything else. If everybody dyes their hair and you just have white hair at a certain age, are you an outlier? Yes. Exactly. And pretty much everyone would say dyeing your hair is less extreme than surgery, especially something like the BBL. Researchers have tried to measure the benefits of plastic surgery and results have been mixed. But because it's variable, of, it's of person some of to the person. Best studies found that overall it does seem to improve quality of life. How much though depends on the surgery. And how do you measure that? Plastic surgery allows some people to maybe exist in the world a little bit easier. Plastic surgery is a way to affirm gender identity. I had my brow bone shaven down, I had a brow lift, I had a nose job, and I also had my chin done. Surgery helps you feminize and helps you become the woman you want to be, but it's, it's so much more than that. The more passable I am as a cisgendered woman, the more safe it is to walk down the street or to just live a normal life. She's living her normal life, and there's nothing wrong with that. Yeah. Without some of the advances that we've had in plastic surgery today, whether you believe in this or don't believe in this, without what we do for a living, we couldn't allow and help these people to live who they truly are. And I don't think that there's a problem with that personally. Ideally, we need to live in a world where we don't need to cut up our bodies to be our best selves. Needs to be less conversations about the good or the bad of plastic surgery itself and more dialogue about what it means to be a person in a marginalized body and and why desirability is even so important to that experience in the first place yes
That was a great video. There are a lot of really sensitive topics in there, and I would love to discuss that with any of you guys at any time. I really like that video. Thank you, Sam, my social media manager. Give me a shout out. Come on in, that's Sam. She picked that out and that's a great video and I'm super excited that we did that because I think there's just a lot of good stuff in there. Hey, again, remember, don't be scared to follow me along on my YouTube journey here. We're having a lot of fun talking about a lot of great stuff. But for now, Dr. Brown, out.